Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today we are going to talk about Osborne Reynolds apparatus. This freestanding apparatus gives a visual demonstration of laminar and turbulent flow. In nature, industries and laboratory experiments, flow mainly occurs under two different regimes, laminar and turbulent. Sometimes an additional flow regime is defined which is known as transition flow regime. At low fluid velocities, the fluid moves without lateral mixing. In such a flow, the streamlines remain distinct from one another over the entire length. This type of flow is called laminar, viscous or streamline flow. In laminar flows, the fluid particles move in layers, sliding over each other, causing a small energy exchange to occur between layers. At high fluid velocities, eddies forms in the fluid under motion causing lateral mixing and superimposition of turbulence on the primary motion of translation, thus disrupting the flow pattern. This type of flow is called turbulent flow. The turbulent flow on the other hand is characterized by random movements and intermixing of fluid particles with a great exchange of energy throughout the fluid. Now, let us see how to distinguish the flow regimes in terms of the Reynolds number. Any combination of low velocity, small diameter, or high kinematic viscosity, which results in Reynolds numbers less than 2000 for pipe flow, will produce a laminar flow. The flow is called laminar because the flow takes place in layers. Any combination of velocity, diameter, or kinematic viscosity, giving Reynolds numbers greater than 4000, will produce turbulent flow. Flows with Reynolds numbers between 2000 and 4000 are called transitional. The flow can be unstable and the flow switches back and forth between turbulent and laminar conditions. Now let us see what is Reynolds number. Reynolds number provides a useful way for characterizing the flow. It is defined as the ratio of rho v l and mu where rho represents the density, v represents the velocity of the fluid. L is an important line dimension of a flow and mu represents the dynamic viscosity. Alternatively, Reynolds number can be expressed as a ratio of V, L and nu, where nu represents the kinematic viscosity. Reynolds number is a dimensionless parameter that is a ratio of inertial or destabilizing force to the viscosity or the stabilizing force. As Reynolds number increases, the inertial flow becomes relatively larger and the flow destabilizes and becomes fully turbulent. Now let us talk about some applications of Reynolds number. The Reynolds number has many practical applications as it provides engineers with immediate information about the state of flow throughout pipes, streams and soils, helping them apply the proper relationships to solve the problem at hand. It is also very useful for dimensional analysis and similitude. As an example, if forces acting on the ship needs to be studied in the laboratory for design purposes, the Reynolds number of the flow acting on the model in the lab and on the prototype in the field should be the same. Reynolds number is important in the design of an industrial mixer. It affects the selection of the impeller geometry, the impeller diameter and the impeller's rotational speed. Turbulent flow system would use a high efficiency axial flow hydrofoil impeller. Low Reynolds number system may require anchor and a double helix impeller. Finally, Reynolds number can be used to control the flow in pipelines to maintain the required level of microbial purity, hence used in a purified water system. Let us now see a demonstration of the experiment. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this apparatus over here is used for measuring the Reynolds number. Now, how is this experiment performed? I'll give you step by step. Basically, we are going to see three different flow rates. We are going to measure the laminar flow, turbulent flow, and transitional flow. Now, how do we do that? Now, this is the overhead tank. Uh, we fill the water in this thing such that the water will start overflowing and will be coming down through this pipe. Once that is done, we will start the dive and the dive will be flowing vertically downwards. 
As you guys can see, we have set it at a flow rate such that we are getting a continuous uh, stream of lambda flow. And to verify whether this thing is lambda or not, we have to collect the water in measuring cylinder which is here. We have to collect the water in this measuring cylinder using stopwatch. We measure the time and how much water is being collected in that much time. So we can uh, put all these values in the Reynolds numbers formula and we can get the value. Okay, so now lamina flow is done. Now we move for transitional flow. Now we use this control valve over here. We move it slightly such that we have this breaking continuous broken line in this flow pattern. Okay, now we can adjust the control valve such that I get a better transitional flow. So now as you guys can see, we are getting a better transitional flow right now. Now to verify whether this is transitional flow, we are going to do the similar procedure. We are going to collect the water in the cylinder using stopwatch. So we will fix the time for example 20 seconds and we will see how much water is being collected. We take all these values, put it in the formula and then calculate the Reynolds number and try to verify whether it is transition flow or not. Now we move to the next flow pattern that is your turbulent flow. So we again move the control valve to a position such that we, we can observe a broken pattern over here. So the flow is broken and that can be considered as a turbulent flow. Now to verify whether this is a turbulent flow, we have to do the similar procedure again. The water will be collected again in the measuring tank using the stopwatch. So we will measure for example 10 seconds how much water is being collected in the cylinder and we will put it in the formula and we will measure whether it is the turbulent flow or not. Ok, now I am going to start the experiment. Uh, we are going to do one reading for turbulent flow. So now, as you guys can see, the water is flowing from this thing inside this uh, pipe and we are going to use this measuring cylinder and stopwatch. So now for 10 seconds, we are going to see how much water is being collected. We start the stopwatch as soon as the water is being poured here. So for one 10 seconds is done. We can see how much water is being collected in the measuring cylinder. And we can note down these values and calculate the results. Thank you Saad for the experimental procedure. So this is how this experiment is performed. Thank you for watching.